In a previous video, I've installed Backup Exec. I've also set up the local disk storage. And now it's time to do the first backup. Under the Backup and Restore button, I have the option to do a one-time backup. Or if I click back up here, I can do a scheduled backup. I just want to do a one-time backup using the server that we see here, which is the server on which I installed Backup Exec. I'll click one-time backup to disk and a wizard comes up. If I click on edit on the right hand side and I get several options such as the schedule. I can choose to run it now, which I will do that, or I can choose to run it at a future date and time. I could also create it without a schedule, so basically it won't run at all until I choose to right click and run it. I can also choose to submit a job on hold as well. Now under storage, I only have the one drive. So it's only going to pick the one drive that's in the pool, which is my 300 gigabyte drive. So there's nothing really to choose there, but if you have multiple drives, then you will have that option. Then I want to decide how long I want to keep it, and I'd like to keep it for the default two weeks, but you can certainly change that if you'd like. Compression, I can choose software compression if I want. I can also choose software encryption. So that will slow things down, but if I do compress it, then I can get more data onto my drive. And if I encrypt it, it will add additional security. So we'll cover those in upcoming videos. I can also choose a priority, highest all the way down to lowest. And that basically tells the processors on the servers what should be done first. So if I choose highest, then it's gonna give this application the highest priority. Under network, I can choose a specific network interface or just choose any available as well as the protocol. Now, I'm only using IPv4 and I'm using only a single ethernet card. So it's really not gonna have a lot of choice there. And since it's local, it's not using ethernet or TCP IP anyway. If I wanna choose notification, I can click on manage recipients and I can add a recipient and I would have to configure this. Now I'm using Office 365, now called Microsoft 365. So I'd have to fill in all this information, which I'm gonna cover in another video, but this is the area where you set up notification. Now it's going to verify by default at the end of the job, but sometimes verification makes the job run much longer. So I'm gonna to choose to not verify the data for this job, and I'll just verify it manually after the job is done. Then we have the GRT, which has to do with granular restore, and that allows us to back up and restore individual files instead of just being able to restore the entire drive. I'm gonna leave that as is. Advanced open file option, then you will see this as well. And it uses snapshot technology. And this allows us to back up open files. So we can choose automatic, system, or hardware. Automatic usually is sufficient. If you installed the advanced disk-based backup option, then you'll see this option. And if we check this box, it's going to use the off-host backup to move backup processing from the remote computer to the backup exec server. So that basically means that if you have a slower computer that you're backing up, which is remote to this computer, then it'll use the processing power in the server if it's more powerful than the remote computer. In this case, I'm backing up locally, so I'll leave that the way it is, but I might actually choose that option if I'm going to back up a remote server in the future. We have pre and post commands. I rarely ever see anyone use these, but if you would like to run a command to run a process before or after the job runs, you can do that. And then we have under files and folders, enable single instant backup for NTFS volumes and the rest of the options that we see here. The defaults are usually just fine, but we'll cover some more of these in detail in upcoming videos. If you're running Microsoft SQL, which we are in this case because we're running Backup Exec, which runs on top of SQL, then it will back up the full database. And I'm gonna click OK on that, and then I'm gonna click on Edit for my selections on the left-hand side. So you see, it's going to back up everything. I don't want it to do that because E is my backup drive. So I'm gonna uncheck the backup drive. I don't wanna back up the backup. I don't mind leaving everything else checked because I do wanna get a full backup. So I'll click okay there. And now under test edit credentials, I want to test all just to make sure my username and password is going to work okay. And everything seems to be successful, although my Microsoft SQL says that it, the test was not applicable, but underneath it, my backup exec database says it was successful. So that all looks exactly the way I expect it. If it doesn't, then you can go in and change your username or password in your account information. 
Once this is all set, we should be able to click OK and then the backup will start. Now it usually takes a couple of minutes for the backup to actually start backing up data, and that's because there's a lot of things that happen in the background. Now if I double click on the job, and it will give me more information. So it says how long the backup has been running, as well as how many bytes I've backed up and the speed. And you may consider switching over to SSD drives or something like that. And we see after about a minute 20, data is starting to back up. At this point, it's at 186 megabytes per minute, but that speed is going to go up over time. And we see that so far we've backed up around 100 megabytes. If I double click on the drive, it'll give me more information such as what files I'm currently backing up, how many directories, how many files, and additional speed information. I can also go into job history. So if I do have any job history, such as files that have already been backed up, it will give me that information. I like to choose expand all so I can see it all at once and expand the size of the box. And it tells me each of the different volumes or types of backups it's running and how it did. For instance, the C drive would be a volume that would show me how it did there. The system state would be another type of backup. So although it's on the C drive, the system state itself has to do with the state of the server as it's being backed up. So it's a little bit different. So in, in theory, it, it shows it as two different backup jobs. But in reality, it's just backing up the data twice in two different ways. And this also gives us an idea if a job has completed or not and what the status was. So we see under set status here, it is running and the type is a backup. I'm going to click close because everything seems to be going the way it should. And when it's all done, I will create another video that shows you how to restore data. So this is how you set up a one-time backup using Backup Exec 21.